90, I can say 98% of those living in the rural area depend on farming for their livelihood. Urban agriculture is, is critical in ensuring food security and enhancing nutrition security in, in many cities. There are so many studies done in, in Asia, in the Philippines, and also some studies done here in Africa, uh, and it is increasingly becoming important. As you know that people are moving now and again from rural areas to urban areas, which we are calling rural urban migration. People are looking for greener pastures. And uh, by so doing, they are putting pressure on resources in urban areas, including food and other natural resources. So activities of urban agriculture would, would, would help significantly to alleviate challenges of food security and the nutritional security. Climate change problems are very much more felt in the agricultural sector. The farmers are unable to, the farming seasons are greatly altered. The farmers cannot really determine when exactly they are to plant. The rains don't come when they used to come. And this year, the rain did not delay. It came early but went for a long time before coming again. But that has helped us because we started this place late. If the rain came the usual way, it will be too late to be doing this planting now. Uh, we hope that will not be late next year because those who planted, you see, look at crops growing. These are the people who planted at the usual time that we usually plant. They didn't care to watch whether the rain is going to come or it's not going to come. They just know that by March we plant and they planted. Although the agri people were on the media saying, don't plant, don't plant, this rain that is coming is false rain. But they still planted and their crops are doing well. So there has been an increase in production for the past 10 years, but as from three years back, it dropped a bit because of this climate change. We had, farmers have come like confused. Because of this climate change, they need to come up with how, how, how strategies on how to fight the effects that come, the thing, the thing that farmers are seeing on the field, on their crops. The main problems we are facing is uh, uh, land fragmentation, which is really a major issue. The land, uh, the land, the, the farm sizes are being fragmented. Most farmers in Cameroon, they face the problems of financing. There is this big problem that they face, is, which is the problem of uh, exploitation from middlemen, mm -hmm. from these buy and sell arms. Those who sell in the urban area, they come and exploit them. They buy very cheap, mm -hmm. then they go and sell and make money. So the farmers they don't have any profit at the end. We equally experience what we call uh, land grabbing, where the wealthy, they grab the much fatal lands in huge hectares, and then they push the real real people, the real real population to the, to the marginal lands that are not really very productive. The, the problems that the farmers and the craftsmen face uh, in the region uh, they, 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 they lack equipment, they lack technical uh, know-how, uh, they, 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 they lack uh, pro the farming products, and uh, they, they, they need uh, some support 
from the government. The, the, the royal farmer, they, they don't really benefit uh, uh, from these trainings. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they train people in town where they are not farmers. In other countries, as I know, agriculture is being, being supported by the government. But in Cameroon, the farmer is the poorest somebody, person. They could have been the one. The government could have been the one to share seats share input for you to help his citizens. The support the agriculture give to the West is not the, the, the support they give to the Northwest, even the, the central region. So I only plead for my colleagues to work hard, acquire land, work what can sustain you for the time you live. Because if you are waiting for the government, no, they will not help you. Yes, there have been some changes in agriculture in Cameroon. Um, for the past 10 years, I think there has been an improvement in production. In Cameroon, the land tenure system is very difficult. People don't acquire land certificate in marshy areas. They don't give. Because these are risk zones. Except you make it to, 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 to become a release, you make use of the place like this. If you make use of the place as we are, as we are trying to make it, 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 it it's, it's of your benefit. It remains yours. More than half of the population are women. But the women, they don't have access to land, according to the Cameroonian context. The, the, the women can only borrow land use it and give it back. A woman, by nature, doesn't own land. You can only own land because you are married and your husband has land. Then now you own that land. But if it happens that your husband leaves this world before you, he doesn't will the land to you, the wife. He wills it to your son. And then that is how you can now own that land. You know, when you are talking of sustenance, uh, uh, we need to look at uh, continuity. Uh, this thing must continue. We're looking at the environment. How are you carrying these agricultural activities? How friendly is it? Uh, to what rate are you depleting the resources? Uh, how, what, what are the plans to, to replenish them? So all those factors, we need to look at them. Uh, they are very critical. Whether we are, when you talk of resources, we are talking of things like water, air, how are we polluting the air, how are we cutting trees, how are we disturbing some natural insects. You know, all those come in, in, in sustainability. Definition of sustainable agriculture that all my women know is to agriculture where you produce, you feed your family, and you are able to send your children to school you are able to buy simple clothes and wear. If you are sick, you are able to buy your drugs, to see the doctor and to buy your drugs. The first priority for us is for our children to be educated. It's sustainable agriculture because we, we just use it, we just, we don't do it in greater quantities. If I talk about mechanization, it's because the, the government is uh, putting a lot of emphasis, trying to look at the possibilities of mechanizing agriculture in such a way that the farmers can produce food to meet the needs of the population. It's, uh, they, they, what, they, what they do actually in the Northwest and in Cameroon in general, they do what we call mixed uh, cropping. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, sometimes some people do to economize their time, some people do it to because they lack of uh, enough land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, they, 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 do, they do the mixed cropping, so maybe to, uh, to, to to, 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 to yield, uh, to get more from the, yeah, from the, from a P, one piece of land. Cameroonian system, from time immemorial, Cameroonians have always practiced a uh, mixed cropping. So we know, uh, 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 
change is not so so easy to come by so we keep on educating for the farmers to see a reason to to, to go in for, for for change to me we do that because of hardship we don't supposed to do mixed crop this this uh, estate like this supposed to be divided monocropping is good you have uh, available space that you can say this space like that is for tomatoes this section only for corn and things like that. Monocropping is good. It's more sustainable. Innova uh, innovations now can easily be applied there. But it's, I will not really say the mix is not very sustainable, it's sustainable to, to a certain extent. We discourage it as much as possible, but they have this challenge. There's something that is actually pushing them to go into mix farming. Is the available now? Uh, mixed cropping is one of the cropping systems which you would see actually in Yaoundé and around in Cameroon. And I think it's also common in many other countries. Uh, it has got its own advantages, also it has got its own disadvantages. But I think it also enhances the uh, uh, availability of food to, to urban dwellers because of you know, the space, they don't have enough space. So they try to utilize whatever space they have and they put all the crops there, yeah. As said, we've been in the agricultural uh, sector and in microcredit in particular, we see that the, the groups that we've been working with within the framework of the microcredit program, there's, there's a marked change in their livelihoods is a change in their living standards. The demand is the demand for credit is more than the, the, the support we have to give them. So we have put in place microcredit uh, schemes in in the various unions. Now a village banks are operating. Our mission is to see a, a nourished world. Yeah? Is to see uh, farmers with the um, sustainable income generating strategies. That's why you see our motto is uh, prosperity for all and um, uh, health for all and prosperity for the poor. Yeah? We are saying that vegetables, they form a critical strategy to generate income because studies have shown that you can generate more income on a small piece of area with the vegetable than in most crops. So we are saying poor farmers, if they can take vegetables, start to produce them, they can enhance their income generating. So we are saying we want to see more farmers producing improved vegetables. And you see when you are talking of health for all, we are saying whether you are rich or you are poor, you need to be nourished. You need the much needed micronutrients for your body to thrive, to stay healthy. So uh, we want to see more people consuming vegetables. Make vegetables be what it is. It, it is curative. So they should use it. I do auto medication. So they should use it because I should not be the one walking and be doing adverts. If you can help us, write to the government, push the government back to the world to educate his people. Because vegetables are part of cure. If they are curative. What I've noticed actually as far as vegetable production and consumption, uh, Cameroon seems to be, to be better than some of the countries I know in Southern Africa. Uh, you would find, if you go to local markets here, you'll find a wide range of vegetables, which you will not find in other countries. So you'd find their dishes is quite diverse. And I would want to call it uh, maybe richer than some African countries I know. So I think they still need some more work to be done on, on, on vegetable research so that we can continue to, to develop and select improved varieties for, 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 the, for the farmers. When I, we came together to form this group, I find that every day I cannot be running to Santa to bring small, small scale product. We must look some piece of land to cultivate to let the community know that food is grown everywhere. We exchange ideas 
on how to plant crops and how to preserve the seeds and how to hold the, to work the farm. To set up a plantation here that would be a treasure for the community. Not even to buy, but to see what agriculture can look like. In town, you will find people cultivating at the back of their homes. That's for subsistence, mostly for subsistence. You will find very few farmers cultivating, having some few ridges behind their houses to go and sell. The, the same farmers uh, are the same producers. They do both farming and uh, they boot agri boot, uh, crafts and agriculture. And uh, the, 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 the producers, the crop producers that are not uh, farmers, they get some of their material mm -hmm. from the farmers. That's where their relationship uh, really comes closer. Like uh, some of the trees, some of the, the seeds, the calabashes, we get them from the farmers. When I do my harvest, I season the, my harvest and select some for the food, for the family. If I have enough, I sell some to raise something to, 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 to support the children going to school. But also to sell so that we can have some small income to support our families. When I don't have work in the workshop, I have to go in the village to work in my farm because I don't only depend on the crop that I'm producing. I go and I work in my farm with my family together. So this group has been existing for about eight years. We are now with the coming of PACA because this is the first organization that is supporting us. They had sent somebody to come and train us on how to keep records. They have also sent somebody to come and train us on how to apply the fertilizers. So we are hoping that now that we are planting good seeds, we will apply fertilizer we we'll also apply some chemicals to stop the grass from growing. We are hoping to have a better harvest. Yes, we used to farm. We just try and hope that nature will favor us. Our mission is to alleviate poverty and malnutrition in the developing world. Uh, through increased production and consumption of um, health-promoting vegetables. If we can still have many more real good, not fake NGOs, good NGOs that are working and producing results on the field, you will go a long way to improve on the living standards of our farmers. We will, if we have enough funding, we can reach out to many more farmers for them to really produce, uh, to train them, build their capacities, give them improved seeds so that they can produce uh, well. The subsidy uh, strategy, so they can subsidize agricultural inputs, which was really helping farmers. Subsidize the agricultural sector, it will make many people to go inside and involve in agriculture. That will make the living standard of Cameroonians very good. To have a place where we will preserve this corn and make it like a market. Because in addition to producing corn, we also want to create a garden where we'll grow various types of vegetables. The government has been doing something, uh, but not uh, really to the suburbs. Mm -hmm. So what we, we, we think is that uh, if the government could go right to the deep of the villages, right to the suburbs of the of the villages, mm -hmm. to meet the rare farmer, mm -hmm. to talk with the rare farmer, to educate the rare farmer. But to help the farmers so that we don't run short of food. If they can provide us with watering instruments, there's a stream down there. So when the sun is too much for the crops, we can water it some kind of irrigation. 
will help us. Increase in fertilizer mm -hmm. and uh, uh, increase in, uh, in, in the number of tractors that the, the farmers group are using and uh, uh, maybe the increase, a little increase in training of the few groups of farmers. We dream of, uh, of a society where farmers are recognized and, and they are involved in policy making in the country. If all the farmers were one, were organized, if we were real, real organized, then we could, we could change, we could make things happen.